Our next guest on The Informer is Chris James, who's the Executive Director of Northlink, and he joins us to talk about the impact that COVID-19 pandemic is having on businesses throughout Victoria. I want you to give us a sense of the impact of COVID-19 mm. and what it's done to businesses in the suburbs uh, around Victoria and around the country. Well, it's, it's been a shock, a, a, a massive shock. Uh, one minute things were going on as per normal, the next minute the whole world was turned upside down. Uh, some businesses, in fact most businesses, have had massive reductions in revenue. Uh, many have had to shed staff or reduce working hours. Most have had to implement working from home arrangements with only a couple of days notice. What about those businesses where their business was compromised seriously by an imposition from government? I mean, it's one thing for others to say that, you know, we're going to suspend business because we can't do this, that and the other. But when you're told that you can't trade the pubs, mm. the cafes, the restaurants, uh, the cafes were told, look, take away only. Mm. Yeah? That's a huge uh, redirection, isn't it? It's enormous. This is a uh, government mandated recession. It's probably the first one since World War Two. That was very different wartime. Absolutely. Wartime, you, you could still... Uh, demand a hug or a handshake, uh, that's not even a part of the exercise at the moment. No, very much so, and it's been particularly difficult on, on people psychologically. And as you know, we've just had Easter and Mother's Day, and for many people it's the first time they haven't been able to catch up. Correct, a double bunger in, so, in many ways. Yeah. What sectors have done well uh, from your observations, and which are the ones that have struggled? Uh, the sectors that have done well would include uh, retail supermarkets, particularly around food. Okay. But you're, you've been specific here. You're talking about the Coles, the Woolworths exercise, the Aldi's and so on. Yeah. Even the corner store. Uh-huh. Because uh, often you couldn't get things at Coles or Woolies. Yep. But you'd go to the little supermarket in your... Just don't mention center. the word toilet paper. Yeah, very much so. It was, <laughs> I'd never seen anything quite like it to have such a mundane item like toilet paper not being available. Suddenly we were all seized by some measure of panic mm. and, uh, and the delivery systems to these major uh, supermarkets uh, clearly need to be, uh, uh, someone needs to take a good hard look at them because mm. they, were, they were inefficient and they remain uh, questionable. And this is the classic case of the normal world being turned on its head. Uh -huh. and. You, you had delivery restrictions in certain areas as to when trucks could come and go. Now that's been thrown out. Yeah, councils were, uh, what we didn't realise was councils were imposing uh, hmm. uh, a noise uh, um, uh, restrictions. So clearly those big semi-trailers or the, the big doubles couldn't come in. Um, yeah. It took us a while to get a measure of what was going on and see those changes or those uh, impositions lifted. It did take a little while, probably shorter than it would in the normal course. Right. And I'll give you an example. Give me like, a... uh, from the point of view of education, TAFEs, university schools, in the normal course, if you were talking about shifting courses online, it would probably take 18 months to two years okay. to get it through various committees and have the various discussions to make it happen. This happened in about a week. <laughs> um, do you think that... Um sentiment has uh, changed uh, throughout the last couple of months of what has been a government enforced lockdown? Well, it has enormously. And in the initial stages, you saw panic. Yep. And, and that Absolutely. was demonstrated with the panic buying. Uh, it was demonstrated with businesses that called us and basically said, look, we're going to be out of business in a week. Um, can you do something? Can you help? Um, that course has changed somewhat. Uh, the businesses that are still able to open have been able to access government relief, such as uh, JobKeeper. Uh, they've also found that things probably, in some cases, aren't as bad as they seem. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of their clients uh, cut all orders at the start of this crisis. They realised the sky hadn't fallen in. They've restored orders. So in the last couple of weeks, we've heard from a number of food manufacturers, for example, uh, that they're having a better May than they did April. And we're, we're hearing from people who said, well, look, we thought we were going to be 80% down, we're now 30% down. 
for okay. example. So it's uh, still not normal, but it's better than it was. Talk to us about uh, government assistance. Has it uh, been affected? Is it likely to be affected? Or is it likely mm. to create uh, bigger problems uh, going forward? It's a really good question, George. Um, I think in the first instance, it has been fairly effective. Uh, the biggest cost to a lot of businesses is lab labour. Mm -hmm. And the thing I keep hearing is JobKeeper has been a saviour because people can keep their workforces intact with some subsidy from the government so they can keep going. Has it been perfect, but it's, it's helped a lot? It's helped a lot. Uh, the big, going forward? The big question people are asking is JobKeeper finishes in September. Mm. Will we be ready to ditch JobKeeper then? And step up. And step up. Own. Wow, yeah. cut the umbilical cord. Um, let's, let's cast our eye uh, beyond our shores globally. Uh, what have you made of um, this uh, pandemic and how has it been received uh, uh, around the globe? Uh, the world economy, uh, as you said, uh, Australia took a fearful hit. What's yeah. the world economy look like? Well, in some ways, that's the real worry mm. um, because you have... Uh, tension with China, for example, they're our biggest customer. Is this more than sabre rattling? Uh, it's always hard to tell mm. uh, with, with China. We've often been in this sort of position before and, and the ship has righted itself. Uh, this back channel diplomacy, etc, etc. Um, but you've got the added element of, of a trade war between the US and China, increased military tensions, uh, you've also got um, the issue of Europe. They've been much more heavily affected by COVID-19 than we have. Fearful. France, Spain, uh, Germany, um, yeah, even Italy. Sweden, which had adopted the herd immunity concept, is suddenly getting a death toll that uh, they hadn't figured on. Absolutely. And I, I think the British try to go down the herd immunity path at the start and they yes. realised... Well, well, their Prime Minister went down. That, yeah. that sort of changed their <laughs> thinking very quickly. Yeah. Um, Chris, it's been uh, really interesting um, getting your perspective. Hmm. Um, tell me a bit more about Northlink. Look, the mission statement is to underpin and boost economic development for Melbourne's northern suburbs. Uh, traditionally, uh, we've been a manufacturing area and very traditional manufacture. Mm, mm. Uh, when I was a boy growing up in Preston, you'd look out the back yard and you'd see smokestacks everywhere, textile, clothing and footwear, Correct, yeah. auto. Yeah. That's slowly disappeared. Wow. Um, the challenge is to move the region to advanced manufacturing and knowledge can, industries. Can we do it fast enough? And 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 take up the slack. We were talking to Craig Ondarchi, who's the member for the Northern Metropolitan Region, yep. and he was telling us that he'd been busy all that week handing out about a thousand meals a day mm. to uh, members of the community that were seriously struggling. Yes. And I said to him, wow, that's a thousand. He says, yeah, but the biggest challenge is it's a multicultural community. Mm. And he said what he couldn't tell was how many really needed a helping hand and food but culturally yeah. were uh, too shy or ashamed to put their hand up and say, we need help. Are yeah. you seeing any of that? Look, there, there is an element of that, and, and that, that crosses all communities. Uh, right. People are too proud to say they need help. Mm. And often the first fallback has been family, but family hasn't been no. in proximity. Can't get, can't get close to them. No. Can't get close to them. Um, I think... The one big opportunity that we've got is, is manufacturing, in a sense, yes. uh, for the North, in that our supply chains were cut. Both the federal and state government now realise we need local manufacturing. We mm -hmm. need to restore some of it. Yeah. Uh, promise to come back and uh, talk to us about the challenges that business is facing. And once again, thank you for being part of The Informer. Thank you, George. Pleasure.